Good morning. Good morning and welcome to good morning and welcome to all of you who are joining us on our live stream as well. It is wonderful to have you with us this morning too. Uh, I am pulling the live stream up on my phone. There we go. Um, but welcome. Welcome to worship this morning. We're so glad that all of you are here. Um, we have a lot of folks traveling and we have a lot of folks sick this morning. So for those of you who are traveling and sick and joining us on the live stream, we're very glad that you are here. Um, I'm going to pray for us and then Raiko is going to lead us in our singing this morning. So let's pray together. Loving and most gracious God, as we come into your presence, we pause and we give thanks for this opportunity to gather on New Year's Eve as we are looking forward to 2024 and uh, just the, 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 the new things that we are anticipating for this year. And uh, we thank you for this time that we are able to gather as the community of faith here uh, in person and with those who are online. We are so thankful for the opportunity to gather with those who cannot be here with us this morning. Um, and then for the opportunities that that gives us to worship together. And we thank you for those. We pray now that you would be with us in our time of worship, that you would help to focus us, that you would calm our hearts and our minds, and that we would, we would be open to your word this morning, that we would be open to hearing where you are calling us, where you are leading us, where you are asking us to be your people in our communities in this new year. It is in your son's most precious name that we pray. Amen. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Welcome to the house of the Lord. Um, I will ask you if you um, can stand up with me and let's worship God together. We're waiting for this day. We're about to end your name. Calling out to you. Your glory like a fire. Awaken in these signs will burn our heart with truth. You are the reasons we are here. You are the reasons we are singing. Open up the heavens. We want to see you. Open up the floodgates. A mighty river flowing from your heart. Feeling Presence in this place, your glory in our face. We're looking to the sky, descending like a cloud. You're standing with us now, Lord. Unblow our eyes. You're the reasons we are here. You're the reasons we are seeing
If you would remain standing and join me in our affirmation of faith this morning with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Uh, before we go into our time of prayer this morning, I want to ask if there are any prayers or praises that we would like to lift up. And uh, for all of you who are on our live stream, um, if you want to share any in the comments, I have it pulled up right here in front of me. Um, so please share any prayers or praises that you have that you would like us to lift up as well. Um, we want to lift up the Hartmans who are traveling. Um, and then Judy called me at about... 10, 15 this morning and said, hey, I just realized that I can't smell anything. Um, and I said, please stay home. <laughs> um, so Judy has COVID this morning. And uh, so we just want to pray for them as they uh, are figuring out how to keep that away from the kids if possible. So any other prayers or praises this morning? Yeah. It went on my first time ever, and it was super awesome. Good. Everything, but it was awesome. 
<laughs> Thomas got to go hunting for the first time this weekend. Love it. Uh, Mallory uh, said uh, it's her and Matt's six year anniversary is tomorrow. And uh, so they just pray for many more. So happy anniversary, Matt and Mallory. They're applauding, if you can't hear that, by the way. Any others? Um, we want to continue to lift up uh, Ashley. Um, she's got surgery coming up in a couple of weeks, um, and it's a pretty major one. Um, so just pray for them as they're preparing for that. And then we're probably going to be missing the deskins for most of January and probably part of February um, as she's recovering from surgery. So just uh, just pray for them, please. Tammy said her son-in-law had gallbladder surgery. Um, it was quick and relatively painless, and recovery's going good. So we are thankful for that. Any others? Um, I said, uh, I'm, I'm going to, as soon as church is over, I'm going to be driving to Florida. <laughs> um, so I pray, <laughs> I know, right? Um, so I just uh, pray for me as I have to go through Atlanta. Um, I, I have to get past Atlanta today. Um, so that's the goal. And then I'm going to stay overnight in Georgia and then finish the drive tomorrow. Um, cause I'm not going to be out on the road super late tonight. That is not something I do on New Year's Eve, um, but I do need to get to about Macon, Georgia tonight. So just pray, church. <laughs> Especially if there's a Bucky's on the way, which I know there is because I'm going to waste a lot of time in there because Patrick isn't here to stop me. There's at least two. Yeah, Patrick flew down yesterday, um, so he's, he can spend a couple of extra days with his folks. Um, but, uh, but that means that I'm going to go unsupervised into a Bucky's. So. <laughs> Thoughts and, thoughts and prayers. Thoughts and prayers. <clears throat> the beaver is going to be very happy. Patrick probably won't be. So. Any others? All right. Let's spend some time in prayer together this morning. Loving and most gracious God, as we come into your presence once again, as always, we pause to give thanks. We are thankful for the gift of today. We are thankful for the gift of New Year's Eve. We are thankful for this time to reflect on the year past and to celebrate the year that is to come. We're thankful for time to be with family and with friends on this winter break time. We're just thankful for, for the ability to gather, to worship, to be together, again, in person, and for those who are joining us online. We're just we're, we're thankful to be together as a community this morning and that you have united us through your spirit. We are thankful, God. And we are also thankful for our praises this morning, for our joys, those things that, that we are just so thankful for. And so we do lift up all of those who are traveling, and we're thankful that they get to travel. We're thankful that they get to go and to spend time with family and with friends, and we're, 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 we're so glad that they get to make those memories, and, and we always look forward to the times when we can travel and be away. And so we do lift up the, the Hartmans and, uh, and lift up uh, myself and Patrick as we are traveling this week as well, and um, just pray for those times to be, to be good and to be safe. We're thankful for Thomas that he was able to go out uh, hunting this weekend for the first time, and we're thankful for the, for the time that he was able to be out and, uh, and spending time with his family as well, I'm sure, with that. Um, even though it was cold, we are thankful for, for him and, and that experience that he was able to have. We also lift up the Murrays, and, and we celebrate with them for their anniversary that they uh, tomorrow, for six years, 
um, of marriage, and we do just continue to pray that you would pour out your blessings on them, especially as they are expecting their little one this coming year. And uh, just pray that you would continue to be with them, to surround them, um, to help Mallory to feel uh, a little bit better um, over these next couple of months, and just continue to, to multiply and amplify their joy together. And we're thankful also for Tammy, for her son-in-law, that uh, his surgery went well, that he is recovering well, um, and that we're, we're, we're thankful for uh, always for the advances in medicine that make surgeries that were really, really serious 10 and 15 years ago, um, almost outpatient surgeries today. We're, we're thankful for that. We're thankful for those advances. We're thankful for technology and for, for medicine always advancing. That is always something that we, for, for us to be thankful for. And God, this morning we do lift up our concerns and our cares and our griefs. And we lift those up to you as well. And so we lift up Judy, uh, who has COVID this morning, and we just pray for them. That is always really stressful when you have two kids in the house figuring out how to keep them well while a parent is sick. And so we just pray for their whole household and for all of those who are sick this morning after Christmas Eve and Christmas gatherings with family and friends. I feel like there's always a lot of just germs floating around uh, on, this, on this winter break. And uh, so we just pray for all of those who are not feeling well this morning that, that you would just help them to, to get better and to, and to heal and to feel like themselves again. And we also continue to lift up Ashley and Sean, that with Ashley's surgery coming up in a couple of weeks, um, that you would just be with them as they are preparing for that, and that you would already be with those who are going to be doing this surgery, the doctors and the nurses who will be taking care of Ashley, and uh, we just are already praying for her in that recovery that is to come. It's, it's going to be a long one and probably a really hard one. And so we just continue to lift her up and give her over to your loving care that you would help her to heal well and, and quickly and that this surgery would take care of, um, of some issues that have come up. And so we just continue to lift them up to you. For all of our unspoken requests this morning, we lift them to you as well and we are so thankful that we can come to you and lay all of these things at your feet, our joys, our cares, our worries, that we can offer them to you, that we can ask for your strength, that we can ask for your spirit, that we can just be in your presence this morning together. God, we are just thankful for the gift of who you are and the gift of your grace that makes us who we are. As we pray all of these things in the words of the prayer that you have taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. A couple of announcements before we continue our time of worship. Um, first of all, uh, ESL classes will start back up on January the 6th. Um, I'm going to be sending an email out to our volunteer list, but I will be driving back from Florida with Patrick um, on the 6th, and so I am in need of somebody to kind of take point on breakfast that morning. We have everything that we need in the kitchen, um, but I just need a couple of folks to kind of take point on being able to cook that morning. Um, so again, if you are willing to help with that, please let me know, but I'm also going to send an email to all of our volunteer list um, looking for a couple of folks to help with that as well. Um, and then just a note on when things are going to resume, because um, we've been taking a break over, over winter break. We're usually out when JCPS is out with a lot of our activities. Um, and so Wednesday Night Live um, will be starting back on the 10th, so not this Wednesday, but next Wednesday. Um, and then like youth group will start back up on the 7th, and um, we'll, we'll, kind of, we'll pick a lot of that stuff back up after JCPS winter break is over. I think those were all of the announcements. 5S is coming up the second Saturday of January, but I'll mention that one again next week. I think those were the, I think those were all of the announcements. Did I forget any? I probably did. It's fine. I'm going on vacation. I don't <laughs> It's fine. I don't care if I forgot any announcements now. Uh, <laughs> anyway, 
As we move into our message time this morning, things are going to look a, a tiny bit different today. Um, because we are going into a new year, uh, New Year's resolutions are something that a lot of us make. Um, by the way, if you're joining us on our live stream, this is going to be a little interactive, and I encourage you to have your fingers ready on the keyboard if you want to participate. Um, but just fair warning, and fair warning to everyone in here. Ha <laughs> ha, you can't escape now. No, Joel, you can't run away. Um, <laughs> he usually goes out to get a donut, don't mind him. Um, but um, New Year's resolutions are something that a lot of us do. And um, often we have resolutions around church. Um, or we want to read the Bible more, or we want to pray more, or that, you know, sometimes we have a resolution about our spiritual life um, that we want to keep for the new year. And one that I hear a lot is that I would like to read scripture more. Um, but then right on the heels of that, I usually hear a lot of people say, I've done it before, but I usually give up because I don't know how to read scripture. I don't know the best way to do this. Like, how, how do I read scripture by myself when I have a hard time understanding it? Um, I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do while I'm reading it. And so for today, um, I want to teach us a Bible study technique that is one of my favorites um, and that is useful if you are reading scripture by yourself. It kind of gives you a, a, a simple outline to follow for how to read and how to study scripture on your own. Um, and so we are going to go through the steps of it, but then we are also going to go through a passage and kind of model how, how we do this together. So this, uh, this study technique is called Lectio Divina. Um, that is Latin, but you know, say it and you sound really fancy. Um, it's Latin for divine reading. Um, and this Bible study technique is meant to focus you on a shorter passage of scripture. Um, it's repetitive, and so you go over the same words over and over again, and it's meant to draw you in to a shorter passage of scripture and help you to reflect on it more. There are a couple of different ways that you can do Lectio Divina, but I'm going to share with you the one that I, that I like um, and that I've done with a, a couple of small groups and my college students, and, and I've used this a lot in the past. So the basic outline of Lectio Divina is that you are going to read a passage of scripture. Oh, look at you. I don't even have to prompt you on the slides. Good job, Patrick. Um, it's very repetitive. So what you do is you have your passage, you read that passage through, you sit in silence for a moment, and then in, in this version that I'm going to teach you, we have four questions that we want to look at. And so you read, you sit in silence, and then you answer the first question. Then you read the entire passage again, sit in silence, and you answer the second question, and so on and so forth. And you just, re you just repeat that. Um, but you do read the entire passage again each time before you answer your question. And so the four questions that I usually have us answer when we do this um, the first one is uh, just to, to, to get, uh, go ahead and switch to the next slide, Patrick. Um, there you go. There's a slight delay on the live stream. That's, I was looking at the little square on the live stream. <laughs> um, the first question that you're going to answer um, is just about getting an understanding of what the passage is actually saying. What do I need to know about the context? Are there people referenced in here? Are there places in here that I do not know who they are? that I feel like I should know who they are? <laughs> what do I need to know about the book that I'm reading? Do I need to know anything else about that? Do I need to know about the people that this is written to? Just what, what is gonna help me understand this passage better? Before we get into what does it mean to me and all of that kind of stuff, what do we need to know about the context of the passage to help us understand what the passage is saying? Does that make sense? Okay. You're ahead of me. That's all right. You stay right there. So then we read the passage again, and the second question that we ask is what is kind of the main idea of this passage? What's the main theme? What is this about? And this is also where um, you, you can say something like, what is drawing my attention in this passage? Is there a phrase? Is there a verse? Is there an idea that is really holding my attention? 
in this passage. Um, but kind of what are the main ideas? What are the main themes? What is this passage actually about? Okay? Does that make sense? Awesome. Third time through, now that we have an understanding of the context and what the passage is about, now we connect this to what does this mean for us today? And right now we're going to keep this a little broader um, in kind of how does it speak to our world today? Um, does it kind of point out brokenness in our world? Is this talking about something that it is calling the church to be, um, our community to be? Uh, we could even go kind of our family, but kind of keep it a little broader at this point. Where does this connect today, these themes in this passage? Where do we see this playing out, or where do we see that this is relevant today? Make sense? Questions? Questions about the questions? All right. And then we're going to read it through one more time, and this is where we get personal. After talking about the context, the main themes, where this speaks to the world, where is this speaking to you? What is, uh, what is really convicting in this passage? And being convicted by a passage of scripture is not a bad thing. But you know, that thing that grabbed your attention earlier, maybe that is just speaking to you in some way of something that you need to pray on, something that you need to read more on, something that you need to, uh, maybe it's calling you on something that you are not doing something that the passage says you should be doing, right? <laughs> like being convicted by scripture is not a bad thing. Um, but where, why did something grab your attention the way that it did? Where is God speaking to you through these words? Does that all make sense? Questions? Okay. Um, when I've done this before, I've had somebody draw a passage, um, like out of a hat, um, which is always really fun because then I don't even know what we're going to talk about, but I didn't do that for you today. <laughs> um, so we are going to use a passage of scripture that a couple verses of this are probably going to be really familiar to you, but we almost never read what comes before it. Um, so we are going to be in Micah chapter six, verses one through eight, um, for our passage this morning. And do, 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 there it is. So again, the prophet Micah, Old Testament, chapter 6, verses 1 through 8. So we are going to read this, we are going to sit in silence for a moment, and then we're going to talk about our first question, which is just what do we need to understand more about in this passage, okay? What do we need to know more about so we can totally understand it? <clears throat> Micah 6, 1 through 8. Listen to what the Lord says. Stand up, plead my case before the mountains. Let the hills hear what you have to say. Hear, you mountains, the Lord's accusation. Listen, you everlasting foundations of the earth. For the Lord has a case against his people. He is lodging a charge against Israel. My people, what have I done to you? How have I burdened you? Answer me. I brought you up out of Egypt and redeemed you from the land of slavery. I sent Moses to lead you, also Aaron and Miriam. My people remember what Balak, king of Moab, plotted and what Balaam, son of Beor, answered. Remember your journey from Shittim to, to Gilgal, that you may know the righteous acts of the Lord. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow down before the exalted God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with 10,000 rivers of olive oil? Shall I offer my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has shown you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? to act justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. Okay. 
what do we need to know more about in this passage? just to help us understand it. Before we start thinking about what anything means, what do we not know in this passage? Were there people, places, things that we don't know that we feel like we should? What do you think? Who is Micah? Uh, Micah is a prophet. Um, so the book of Micah is what is called, a, he's one of what's called the minor prophets, and that's only because his book is short. Um, there are the major prophets, they are really long. Micah is a minor prophet, their books are really short. Micah is also one who has a lot of savior looking forward to the Messiah prophecy in his book. I don't know that that totally applies here, but just to know that. Huh? Who is he talking to? Yeah, so this, uh, this passage, if, if we look, um, and I think you can see it, uh, you, uh, if, if you have it pulled up or if you're looking at it, there are quotation marks around um, probably verses one, one through five, and that is God speaking to the people. And then verses six through eight are kind of the prophet speaking to the people. Um, so the first one is God kind of saying, like, again, how, how have I burdened you? What's, what's, going, he's, what's going on, guys, essentially? Um, you know, I brought you up out of Egypt. I redeemed you. Um, I sent Moses to lead you. Remember your journeys. Remember all of these other people. It's reminders of the covenant, right? Um, and so his charge to Israel in this is kind of like, hey, I've kept my end of the bargain. What's going on, you guys? And so then in verses 6 through 8... It's more of Micah talking to the people of saying, we know what God needs us to do. Does that make sense? Does that help? Yes. That is from, and by the way, if you all ever like are doing this on your own and you want to know this, I went to a Bible dictionary because I had to look that up too. I was like, I don't remember what that's from. Because we don't read the Old Testament, right? <laughs> we don't know what all these places are. Um, we don't, Joel. I'm sorry to break it to you. Um, but yeah, like the, we don't remember a lot of these people and places in the Old Testament, right? Um, Shatim, which I know it does not look like that's what it says, but that's how you pronounce it. Shatim and Gilgal is from the book of Joshua. Uh, Shatim was the last place they camped outside of the promised land, and Gilgal was the place that they camped inside the promised land right outside of Jericho. So it is what he's saying in this is that remember that promised land that I brought you into? That's the journey that he's reminding them of. Hmm. I would actually need to go back and look that up because um, I don't remember, and somebody help me out if you know your Bible history a little bit better than I'm remembering right now. Was Micah written in a time of exile? I feel like it was. A lot of them were. <laughs> I, I was like, like is, is he another one? I'm, I'm looking at Joel because Joel also went to seminary. And <laughs> I'm like, do you remember some of this Joel better than I do? Um, Okay. Okay. So we're, we're almost in exile, which would be why he has a charge to the people of Israel, right? Hey, y'all aren't holding up your end of the deal here. How do we, how do we go about fixing this? All right, so this is right, right before the exile, if we're remembering correctly. Thank you, Joel. I'll pay you later. Any other questions that we need just to help us understand this better? Whoop, I just realized I don't have the live stream up. I'm seeing if anybody on the live stream has a question. I don't see one. Our live stream people understand the Old Testament very well. They don't need to answer questions. Any other questions that we need to, that we feel like we need to answer here though?
Okay. Now, again, what we're going to do is we are going to go back and we are going to read the passage again, but this time we're going to focus on a different question. This time is what is this passage about? Okay, what are the themes? What are the big ideas? What is this passage about? Micah 6, verses 1 through 8. Listen to what the Lord says. Stand up, plead my case before the mountains. Let the hills hear what you have to say. Hear, you mountains, the Lord's accusation. Listen, you everlasting foundations of the earth. For the Lord has a case against his people. He is lodging a charge against Israel. My people, what have I done to you? How have I burdened you? Answer me. I brought you up out of Egypt and redeemed you from the land of slavery. I sent Moses to lead you, also Aaron and Miriam. My people, remember what Balak, king of Moab, plotted, and what Balaam, son of Beor, answered. Remember your journey from Shittim to Gilgal, that you may know the righteous acts of the Lord. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow down before the exalted God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with 10,000 rivers of olive oil? Shall I offer my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has shown you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? to act justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. Okay. What are we feeling like this passage might be talking, like what, what, is, what is this about? What are the big themes here? Excellent observation. Uh, if you couldn't hear that on the live stream, uh, Eli essentially said that it's a reminder. Um, I think you're kind of talking more about the end here um, of that we need to remember that faith is not easy but simple. Um, and it's a reminder of what is at the heart of the covenant, right? We can follow the laws and everything that we want, but there is something else at the heart of what it means to be a person of faith. <clears throat> Anybody else want to point something out? Anything really standing out to us as a main point? This is also a good place to be like, is there something that you just really like in this passage? Like, is there something that you, you read that and you're like, oh, yeah. Yeah, God, here we go. I think we, we sometimes forget that covenants are a two-way street. Um, covenants are a contract. And I think we, we, we have to remember that sometimes. And so, yeah, part of this is God going, I kept my end of the deal here, folks. And I, you made covenant that I would be your sovereign God and that you would be my people. And here is how you have not been my people. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. And this is more than 
I think we've talked about it in here before of like sometimes um, it's like the, the transactional faith of like, okay, if I do this and this and this, I'm on the good list and not the naughty list, right? Um, and so, but, but that's exactly what, the, you know, what that is of like, okay, you can't buy your way in, <laughs> essentially. You can't just go through the, do you really think that God does not see that you're just going through the motions? Do you think God does not understand that your heart is not in it? I think if we're going to tie it to, to New Testament, um, the other example that we kind of see of this is this is why Jesus gets really grumpy with the Pharisees, right? This is the exact same thing that he keeps telling the Pharisees and the super religious leaders of like, look, y'all are going through the motions. Great. Y'all are doing awesome on that. You all have completely ignored all of the people around you who are in need. What are you doing? Like, this is exactly the reason why Jesus gets grumpy with them. Yeah, that's a good thought. And you are right too, Tammy, and this is the, uh, just for time's sake, I'm going to move us along after this. Um, that the, the, in those, those sacrifices that he's talking about in verses 6 and 7 of like, you know, a thousand cattle and rivers of olive oil, those are super extravagant things that nobody would be able to offer. Like, he's, he's, he's speaking in hyperbole there, right? Of, like, you, you could give absolutely everything in the world that is all beyond your reach, and that would still not be what God actually wants. God has told you what he requires. He requires you to act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly. Okay. So, again, just for the sake of time, I'm going to kind of move us along. Um, so we're going to read it again. And this time we're looking to connect it to today, right? Where is this still really relevant for today? Micah 6, verses 1 through 8. Listen to what the Lord says. Stand up, plead my case before the mountains. Let the hills hear what you have to say. Hear, you mountains, the Lord's accusation. Listen, you everlasting foundations of the earth. For the Lord has a case against his people. He is lodging a charge against Israel. My people, what have I done to you? How have I burdened you? Answer me. I brought you up out of Egypt and redeemed you from the land of slavery. I sent Moses to lead you, also Aaron and Miriam. My people, remember what Balak, king of Moab, plotted and what Balaam, son of Beor, answered. Remember your journey from Shittim to, to Gilgal that you may know the righteous acts of the Lord. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow down before the exalted God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with 10,000 rivers of olive oil? Shall I offer my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has shown you, O mortal, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you? To act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. All right, now that we've talked a lot about the context and what this passage means, how is this speaking to our world today? What do we as the church in 2023, almost 2024, do with this? God's talking to us. He's, he wants us to know that we've not stood by brothers and sisters that need us. Yeah, it makes me think a lot of the upbringing that I had in the church and how it was so. Saying the words instead of just sitting in your button of pew and 
Mm -hmm. We're going to get Tammy fired up. <laughs> no, I like it. It's a good thing. We're in the same place as the people that have these. This is really kind of a more things change, the more things stay the same kind of thing, right? When, when we do our full communion liturgy, I love tying stuff back to the communion liturgy because it's something that we, we wrote it this way for a reason. Um, you know, we have that, uh, that prayer that we do together as the church, you know, where we say, merciful God, you know, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart and we have failed to be an obedient church and we have not done your will and we have broken your law and rebelled against your love and all of these things. And, you know, it says free us for joyful obedience at the end of it. And, um, and it's one that I think... We, we do need to be reminded um, of the places where we have gone on autopilot. We've done all the right things, but we need to find that joyful obedience again of what is, what is God actually asking us to do as the church. And, you know, as Micah says at the, at the end, we, we know what we're supposed to do. Um, we're supposed to act justly, and we're supposed to love mercy, and we're supposed to walk humbly with God. And that is supposed to reflect in everything that we're doing. I feel like, and I think, I think the piece that to, to that we're kind of missing there a little bit, because I think you're right. I think we can it can turn into almost kind of a vicious cycle. But I think where grace comes into play with it is that it's not necessarily a cycle. It's that we're we're, we're stepping forward and we want to do better and we're trying to do better. But there's always a way that we can do better. And I think we even even when we do take a massive step and say, "Ha, progress! Look at me." I made great progress. I did this amazing thing. It's like, yeah, but there's, you, you keep moving. Like, you can't sit on that for forever and, you know, kind of rest on your laurels kind of thing. Does that make sense? Good. What, is the, what is the last sentence? To, to walk humbly with God. To love mm -hmm. mercy. To walk humbly with God. To walk humbly with God. Mm -hmm. Excellent job. Again, just kind of for the sake of time, I'm going to move us along. Um, and so we're going to read it through again one more time. And then this last one, and this is one that I, want, I do want to encourage you. If you do not want to share, like if we want to just kind of spend a second on the personal side of this. Um, but if you, want, if you want to share, absolutely feel free. But if you don't want to, that's also fine. This is about where is this speaking to you? 
Okay, where, what, what in this has really spoken to your heart today? Micah 6, 1 through 8. Listen to what the Lord says. Stand up, plead my case before the mountains. Let the hills hear what you have to say. Hear, you mountains, the Lord's accusation. Listen, you everlasting foundations of the earth. For the Lord has a case against his people. He is lodging a charge against Israel. My people, what have I done to you? How have I burdened you? Answer me. I brought you up out of Egypt and redeemed you from the land of slavery. I sent Moses to lead you, also Aaron and Miriam. My people remember what Balak, king of Moab, plotted and what Balaam, son of Beor, answered. Remember your journey from Shittim to Gilgal, that you may know the righteous acts of the Lord. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow down before the exalted God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with 10,000 rivers of olive oil? Shall I offer my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has shown you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. Where is this speaking to you? Grace means you where you are. Right. And I think it's, it's, it's also one that, like, when we start talking about if we're really focusing on acting justly and loving mercy and walking humbly and all of these things, the desire to follow the path of God will come naturally from that. And so sometimes we, it, it's, it's like a reverse engineer thing, right? Sometimes we're like, oh, well, if we follow the law, maybe we'll actually, like, care about God eventually. Um, but like it's it's one of those that if we care about God and living into grace, those other things are gonna come are gonna come from that. And so it's the desire and not necessarily the looking good part. Something that always gets up and smacks me in the face every single time I read this passage, and I hate it, is the love mercy part. I like mercy for me. Do I love mercy for other people? <laughs> and that makes me mad every time I read it. Because sometimes when something happens and I feel like somebody got what they deserved, I'm like, yeah, justice. And then mercy happens, and I'm like, boo, mercy. I'm supposed to love mercy. Hmm. Yuck. You're young, Tammy. Mm -hmm. And in the past, I've, I mean, I grew up in the church, so I heard, you know, sit and be meek and be mild and, and, and be merciful. Be, this is what God requires of you. And, and I internalized it as be quiet. Don't, don't be quick to jump. And I think that this, this passage where it begins is calling me to, Say the words. 
Any other thoughts? Is this helpful? Do we like this? Okay. This is not the only Bible study technique out there, by the way. Like, just, this is not the end-all be-all. Just quit making faces at me. <laughs> Uh, but this is one of my favorites, and um, it works better with some passages that, like, don't try to read one of the genealogies and do Electio Divina on the genealogy, okay? Like, don't, don't do that to yourself, but, like, passages like this are really good ones for it, and, um, and so this is just something that, again, if you are hoping to read more scripture or to do more study um, on your own or within a small group over the next year, this is just a, a tool that you can have in your toolkit um, for doing that. Okay. Well, we are going to, I know it's 1145 and we're late. I know. Don't shake your keys at me. Don't you do it. Um, but we are going to do communion and then Reiko is going to lead us in our last song. Um, so we do, uh, I want to extend the invitation that Christ our Lord invites to this table all of those who love him and all of those who earnestly repent of their sin and all of those who seek to live in peace with one another. And we are reminded that on the night that Christ gave himself for us, he shared a meal with his disciples where he took bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to the disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body, and it is broken for you. And so do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, he blessed it, gave thanks to God, gave it to the disciples, and said, drink from this, all of you, this is my blood of a new covenant, and it's poured out for you, and it's poured out for many, for the forgiveness of sins. And so do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let's pray. Loving God, we do pray that you would pour out your Holy Spirit on each and every one of us who have gathered here and on these gifts of bread and the fruit of the vine. And we pray that they would be for us the body and blood of Christ so that we might be for the world the body of Christ, those who are redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ and make us one with each other so that we might be one in ministry to all of this world until Christ comes again in final victory and we feast together at his heavenly banquet. It is through your son, Jesus Christ, with your Holy Spirit in your holy church that all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Eli, do you want to help me with communion this morning? You're usually singing. I never get to call you up front. Uh, so again, I'm going to invite our worship team to come forward, and then uh, the rest of you, please feel free to come forward as you feel led to the table of grace this morning. Next line. Hmm? Do you know your line? Good job. Can I say it correctly? <laughs>
beside you, I'm around you, and within you, He's with you, He's with you in the morning, in the evening, and you're coming, and you're going, and you're weeping and rejoicing. He's for you, He's for you, He's for you. you stand for our benediction. It is our reminder as we go from here and as we step into a new year that the love of God is with you and the grace that has been poured out on us through his son Jesus Christ it is sufficient and it is enough and the power of his spirit it is with you and goes before you as you leave. So go in the love in the grace in the power and in the peace of God. Amen.